Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to Integra One's uh, presentation uh, on Florida Voice with our Fortinet team. I'm Brad Reitmeyer, the uh, Director of <clears throat> Security uh, Networking and Overall um, Service at Integra One. Today, uh, we are going to talk uh, with the Florida Voice team about Florida Voice. Um, Feel free to enter any questions you may have in the uh, chat box in your uh, Good for Meeting webinar application, and we'll get to them at the end. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> Just again, uh, a little bit of uh, information on Integra One. Uh, we are a company who has technology that works for you um, and not the other way around, so we're trying to introduce products that, that enable you to uh, do your jobs better and do uh, your products better. Next slide, please. Uh, just a reminder that um, we have products in, in a, a bunch of different areas, not just the fluffing like we wouldn't talk about today. Uh, security data center, collaboration, um, IoT, uh, technical repair services, managed services. Next slide. Uh, covering a lot of uh, areas, um, for those of you not familiar, we're in uh, business for 30 years uh, this year, so a uh, good milestone for us. We expand our offices uh, in of Pennsylvania, Allentown, Philadelphia, Harrisburg, Wilkes-Barre, and Pittsburgh, and in quite a number of uh, the uh, verticals that um, are, comp are um, based, commercial, healthcare, state, will govern, higher ed, and K-12. Next slide, please. And again, if we uh, if you stick through this seminar, listen to what we have to say, uh, fill out the survey at the end, you will receive a $10 Starbucks gift card for your time and your uh, feedback. Um, we appreciate that greatly. Uh, we'll be jumping into the seminar uh, with uh, Phil from our uh, partner at Fortinet. Fortivoice is a, a relatively new product to us, but uh, not to the industry. Uh, we've selected it as uh, one of our premier uh, voice solutions uh, to add to our tool set. Uh, again, uh, Fortinet is a very strong partner with Integra One. It's a very strong product, and we feel as though the feature functionality uh, and um, reliability are, are, are industry standards uh, from Fortinet, and we believe they've extended that to their voice product. And hopefully, you'll see that within the presentation. Again, any questions, go ahead and uh, Please enter them in the chat window, and uh, we'll also address questions at the end of the presentation. All right, right, now I'm going to hand it over to Phil, uh, and um, take it away, Phil. Uh, Phil, you're on mute. If, uh... Can you guys hear me okay? Yes. Good morning. Hey, I'm Phil Genovesis. I manage our voice and video products at Fortinet, and today we're going to do a quick overview of, the, of our Forta Voice solution. Uh, joining me as well as my systems engineer, Veronica, uh, and she'll give us a, a quick uh, review of the actual system GUI at the end of my presentation. Uh, but to give you guys a little bit of history on FortiVoice, um, Fortinet is known for network security, first and foremost, uh, but we've actually had our voice product for about 10 years now. Um, FortiVoice is actually built on the same core operating system that we utilize on our firewall platform, FortiOS. And the reason I bring that up as being relevant is you, Fortinet kind of invented the next-gen firewall unified threat management business model with one core security layer that basically enabled all of our features and functionality. Uh, you, the fact that we utilize FortiOS in our voice platform uh, basically copies that same business model, which is very unique and I would say disruptive to the overall uh, unified communication industry, where we have our solution that basically includes all feature sets and functionalities uh, with very, very minimalistic licensing. It's uh, more of a, an all-you-can-eat type scenario of, of features. Um, in terms of the actual feature sets that are included with Full of Voice, um, and this is relevant to essentially all of our deployments, whether it's a large-scale enterprise, 10, 15,000 users, whether it's uh, smaller um, SMB type scenarios, uh, we, we don't discriminate based on size. Our, our solution is basically standardized across um, all, all industry verticals. Um, from a feature set perspective, all the core functionalities you'd expect to see within a um, communication platform are, of course, included. So um, from a, a kind of basic telephony standpoint, things like auto attendance, 
things like unified messaging and voicemail to email are built into the core photo voice layer. It's not a scenario where we're, we're running separate servers. I think it exists within that core instance. Uh, things like media, music on hold are included within photo voice. That can be set up where it's universal or departmentalized based on um, the customer's um, uh, deployment topology. Um, there's a fully embedded conferencing solution, uh, which basically allows us for um, uh, potentially displace um, third-party e-conferencing bridges. Um, from an intercoming perspective, uh, we support full intercom functions, meaning that this can be utilized for voice broadcast. We also have the ability to interop with legacy intercom systems. So if it's a scenario where we have a customer that potentially has an older analog-based uh, PA system, uh, or if, even if they've upgraded to something that's SIP standard, uh, Fortivoice Voice can basically interop with that. Um, that also includes things like Bell systems um, for our, our, our um, educational customers. Um, from a mobility perspective, we support full soft client functions. So we have a mobile client, we have a desktop client. Those can be interop with uh, physical extensions. So it can be a scenario where we uh, basically have one extension coexisting across multiple IP endpoints for a true unified communication experience. Uh, we support multiple scheduling modes. Um, given that we are Fortinet, security is very, very important. Uh, we do support multiple layers of encryption. We support TLS version 1.3. We support secure RTP. Uh, we are HIPAA. We are PCI compliant. And we're also compliant with Kerry's law uh, in terms of E911 compliance. Uh, basically, the ability to broadcast uh, locational information out based on where uh, an emergency call should potentially take place. And that is definitely something that's mission critical these days. Uh, we also support a full emergency mass notification system built into the photo voice, meaning that if there is ever um, a scenario where potentially we need to do a lockdown or, or potentially get information out to every single endpoint, we have the ability to actually send those broadcasts out. Uh, that's both in the form of a, of a, of a um, audible notification or, or a physical notification on the actual IP handset, meaning an actual text message. A good example of that, knock on wood, if there's ever any type of active shooter situation, uh, Fort Voice basically has the logic to, to send that information out uh, and again, potentially help mitigate and uh, make sure that um, the end users are, are acting accordingly based on that, that specific use case. Uh, we support click to dial functionalities, Outlook integration, and again, lots and lots of different features. Uh, moving on to our enhanced feature set, which is also included within Fort Voice. These are more typically enterprise features. Uh, we do support full call queuing functions, meaning that if um, we have um, individual extensions that need to be set up within a queue type function, uh, that's fully embedded within the Fort Voice. Uh, we also support full call recording, meaning that um, potentially every extension could have the ability to be recorded. Uh, that's something that can be set up where it's always on, meaning that uh, specific extensions or specific hunt groups are recording at all times. We also have the ability to enable ad hoc recording, meaning that um, in real time, you can configure an extension appearance key on the actual phone to enable that recording function. Recordings uh, can be stored on the photo voice instance itself, but we also support integration with NAS, meaning that we can point this to uh, an additional storage layer uh, for long-term archiving if that is a, an actual requirement. Um, we also support full hot desking functionality, which is basically log in, log out um, feature sets. So if it is a scenario where potentially we have a shared office environment and our end users uh, want to work from different endpoints every day, um, the system has the logic to, to basically have uh, those specific extensions logged into those endpoints. We can also schedule it that the system will, will log people out after a certain duration or after a certain time of day. Uh, so again, very flexible from kind of a, a shared office environment. Uh, in terms of network resiliency, the solution is very, very um, um, solid in that regard. Uh, we can configure and design solutions um, that support um, standard individual sites. We can support high availability. We can support geo-redundancy if we're looking to support uh, multiple data centers in a larger organization. We also support full site surroundability, similar in, in Cisco world to SRST. So that basically enables us the ability to uh, have um, site resiliency, and that really is completely independent of what the core topology calls for. So it could be an on-premise deployment, it could be a virtualized deployment, it could be a cloud-based deployment, and this would basically uh, ensure that every site in the event of a catastrophic ISP failure would still have full site survivability. Um, there's a fully embedded T38 fax server as well, so this potentially allows us to displace old-school legacy fax as well as uh, e-fax servers. Um, that could be provisioned to every single extension or, or to actual groups of facts. 
and that's accessible via a web-based user portal that all extensions have access to. Um, we also do support video calling functionality. So we support H.264, H.265 video codecs, which basically allow us to do point-to-point uh, -point video. Um, in the not too distant future, we're actually releasing multi-point conferencing. Um, as, a, as an integration step, we also do support um, integration with Microsoft Teams or uh, formerly Skype for Business. Um, so again, if there's more collaborative type video that's required, uh, we can fully integrate with that platform. Uh, we also do support integration with Amazon Alexa. Um, that's actually a relatively new feature, but if there, there's a skill within the Alexa marketplace that basically allows us to uh, essentially use the Echo endpoints as a phone within Photo Voice, uh, or actually configure one of our Photo phones to have Alexa features via an extension appearance key. Um, and actually, what we do utilize it quite often, especially for people that potentially have disabilities uh, or a potential scenario where somebody can't interact with the phone, having that voice AI uh, interoperability can definitely come in handy. Um, in terms of reporting functionality, there's a fully embedded um, enhanced CDR within the actual photo voice, which basically allows us to run reports pr pretty much on anything that's happening within the system. So if we wanted to run audits, um, call duration, trunk usage audits, all of that exists natively. Uh, we also support a full SMDR script, which basically allows us to interrupt with any type of backend call accounting platform. So potentially, if you want to take information from the photo voice and offload that for billable purposes, uh, very handy in the hospitality world or in terms of law offices, uh, that's definitely something we can do. We support full integration with Active Directory. And that, that allows us for um, a single sign-on authentication, as well as actually building out our extension list via the existing AD. Uh, and of course, allows us to query the existing database um, if we do want to do uh, direct phone calls. Uh, and lastly, most importantly, I would say, is the whole solution is centrally managed. So regardless of what the topology uh, that we've designed is, it, it's basically one pane of glass that allows us to uh, manage and control the photo voice on a daily basis. Um, as I mentioned before, there's, there's very minimalistic licensing. There's only really three features on photo voice that potentially could require a license. Uh, first off would be the uh, call center or automatic call distribution. This basically allows for full call center type functionalities. It is a one-time perpetual license that basically, uh, once enabled, unlocks that functionality forever. Uh, this enables full call queues, skill-based routes, manager login, as a fully integrated IVR. Um, that IVR can also be interrupted with backend databases via the use of our REST API. Um, so if there's a scenario where potentially we want to automate certain circumstances within uh, incoming calls and eliminate that human factor, we, we absolutely can do that via the uh, IVR functions. There's a fully integrated auto dialer, there's customer callback functions, meaning that if the queue is congested, the system will maintain that call and basically call back the incoming caller should they select that as an option as opposed to having to wait on hold. Um, we support full integration with Microsoft Salesforce. We do screens, screen pops through Salesforce. Um, and this is a very scalable product. Essentially, the way it works is there's a base license that supports the first 10 agents, uh, which I believe is only about $1,000 MSRP list price. Um, we can then grow that, that instance based on incremental licenses of five additional agents. So again, very, very flexible, very affordable, uh, and overall an excellent uh, addition if call centers needed. The second uh, license that, that may be required, again, very, very kind of niche, is we do support full hotel um, property management integration. So we basically have the, in, uh, the ability to interrupt with any type of backend property management um, system that's potentially in place. And this just basically allows the photo voice to communicate with that platform and typically automate any type of hospitality type scenario that would be taking place. Um, the licensing model on this is, is exactly the same as what it is on call center. It's $1,000 for the base license that supports the first 50 rooms. And then, you, then we can do incremental updates of 25 additional rooms, and I believe it will cost them about $450. And again, that, that is a one-time perpetual license. Uh, in terms of scalability of our solution, it's very, very flexible. Um, so it's almost similar to what we do in our, in our, in our firewall world, where in, in FortiGate land, um, basically specking out a, um, an instance for our, one of our end users is really based around certain metrics, things like ISP throughput, things like VPN connectivity. In Forta Voice world, it's basically the same thing, except we're looking for total user capacity as well as concurrent call capacity. Um, and like I said before, the, the experience is essentially unified. So whether it's a smaller deployment, a larger deployment, um, or the overall scenario in terms of features is very much the same. Uh, in terms of the Forta Voice solution itself, it, it is, um, as I said, very, very scalable. Uh, the way this would work is we essentially support anywhere between 100 users on the kind of smallest instance up to 50,000 users on, on our largest enterprise deployment. 
um, and basically everything in between that. Um, now, this platform can be really whatever we want it to be from a kind of network deployed topology perspective. Um, it can be a hardware based, all of these are available as, as an actual physical appliance. It can be virtualized, um, so the same instances can be set up uh, via whatever type of uh, hyperconverged infrastructure uh, our end users have access to. Uh, we support VMware, we support Microsoft Hyper V, we support Linux KVM, and we support Citrix based instances. Um, we can also host this in AWS or Azure, which is somewhat unique, uh, giving us the ability to actually have a fully cloud-based deployment with more of a CapEx model as opposed to um, a SaaS-based model, which, which can actually be significantly more expensive. When we're looking at cloud-based uh, competitors, maybe something like a Ring Central or an 8x8 as an example, typically they're, they're license-based per user per month um, with a monthly reoccurring fee for every one of those users. Um, which again, it, it, for some people might make sense, but um, again, that, that is a monthly reoccurring cost. So uh, if you look at that over the long term, it can be quite pricey. With our solution, um, it's just a matter of that one-time capital expenditure and then whatever hosting fees are required within AWS or Azure, which is typically much less than a per user SaaS model. So this really kind of enables the best of both worlds. Uh, in terms of those extension capacities, we basically, uh, our end users basically have that capacity whether they need it or not. We don't charge extension licenses. So the way this would work is once uh, an, in an instance has been purchased, our end users have that, that capacity whether they need it or not at the end of the day. Uh, generally, we'll slightly over prescribe just to make sure we have growth capacity. But if we have, say, uh, an end user that maybe has 250 um, extension requirements. We would typically recommend something like the Photo Voice 500, which uh, obviously has 500 extensions. Um, and that would give us uh, basically room to, to grow from a, a double in terms of overall capacity. Um, and again, our pricing model is very, very aggressive. Um, the entry level instance at, at MSRP list price for something like the Photo Voice 100, I believe is something about $2,000 list price. And again, that's a one time perpetual cost that it basically unlocks all that feature functionality we looked at earlier, plus the capacity that's included with the system. The next metric we look at is SIP trunking. So if we are going to be use, using voice over IP SIP trunks, um, we can interop with really whatever type of carrier you, you want at the end of the day. We're, we're essentially carrier agnostic. Uh, we do actually provide dial tone as well by our protocol SIP service. So that is something with potential interest. Not to say it's mandatory, but it's definitely something that we do offer. Um, SIP trunking basically will terminate directly to the photo voice instance. Uh, SIP sessions will dictate how many concurrent calls are available through that SIP trunk. Um, so typically SIP session is what would dictate uh, the voice capacity layer. And then of course, as you can see here, we have vCPUs and, and RAM that are available for the virtual instances. Um, as I mentioned before, we also do support integration with Microsoft Teams. Uh, we support integration with uh, Zoom. So if we want to do Zoom rooms for um, unified conferencing, that's definitely something we interrupt into the photo voice. Uh, we also support uh, full integration with single wire and Formacast, which is an omni-channel mass notification platform. Um, outside of what I mentioned before in terms of uh, emergency zone type scenario, uh, that basically ties to things like social media and other third-party products. Uh, excellent, excellent product. And that's definitely something that if you have now, we can continue to use, or if you're looking to deploy it, uh, we can definitely look to, to make that recommendation. Uh, next up here, we have our survivable gateways, which basically enable um, redundant proxy functionalities at individual sites. So in this scenario here, these basically enable full site survivability. These units have embedded FXO and FXS ports. If we want to run traditional uh, analog trunks or analog extensions, these units can also be set up with SIP trunking as well. Um, and I'll talk about these a little bit more in terms of survivability in a moment. We also do have uh, traditional ATAs that basically enable for additional FXO, FXS, and PRI functionality. So if again, we want to run uh, more legacy type dial tone, that's definitely something we can do with our modular PRIs. Um, from a network topology perspective, um, again, the solution is very flexible. Uh, in this example here, this would be maybe a single site deployment running a physical appliance as, as an example. Uh, here we have our photo voice, which is basically acting as our, our primary media processor. Um, if we are using SIP trunks, SIP trunks terminate directly to the photo voice instance. Uh, we really don't even need to run a session border controller if we're running our photo gate, because we'll actually enable SIP ALG on the firewall on 48, basically scrub and protect all that incoming and external SIP traffic. Um, once that SIP trunk is registered to the photo voice, we then allow that to traverse locally to the LAN, whatever phones are physically on site, as well as flow over the WAN to all of our soft clients, remote office users. If it is a scenario where we're using um, legacy dial tone, something like a PRI or uh, old school FXO, 
uh, path from uh, we basically implement that gateway which would basically act as the endpoint termination that would then convert to sip locally and allow that to communicate to the core sort of voice instance um so again very um uh, very traditional old school type of um, deployment in this type of scenario but some customers still want to have that, that flexibility so we don't want to discriminate based on individual use, uh, individual use case uh, the next deployment here would be uh, more typical in terms of our larger deployments. So in this example here, we have our, our, photo, our, our core photo voice instance. This could be set up as a geo-redundant cluster, meaning that um, if it is a scenario, maybe we're running in AWS, we're running in Microsoft Azure, we can basically leverage that into the cloud, set up two instances as site A, site B, set up our SIP proxy, which would basically be registered to both of those instances in real time. If for some reason we lose connectivity to one of the sites, we basically default onto the secondary instance uh, to, still, to still provide full communication functionalities. And similar to what we looked at in the other one, in this scenario here, we're, we're running whatever type of backend WAN infrastructure is needed at the, uh, the customer site. And that could be something like VPN connectivity, IPsec, SSL, could be something like an MPLS, or, or, for, or for bonding multiple ISP connections, utilizing SD-WAN, uh, definitely a good option there. Something Fortinet really does excel at uh, on the network security side. Um, so in this example here, we're, we're basically traversing all that SIP traffic over the WAN, all of our branch offices, all of our phones are basically registered to that core infrastructure and being managed as such. Uh, and like I mentioned before, this is all centrally managed by one core user interface. So regardless of how many sites there are, everything is being managed by that, that core scenario. Uh, in the next example here, it's the exact same thing, but now we're running those survivable gateways. And as I mentioned before, those are basically uh, set up to action as a fully survivable proxy. What's nice about this, especially if we're doing the AWS Azure route, is now we have a full um, uh, resilient per site based uh, cloud managed solution, which is something typically the SaaS providers uh, may have a little bit more struggle trying to deploy. In terms of utilizing the local survivable gateways, uh, basically similar to the, the initial slide, we have all of our branch offices phones which are registered to our core instance. We secondarily have our local survivable gateway which in turn has access to whatever type of PSTN resource we've allocated. And the vast majority of the time, this is how that, that topology would look like. If for some reason we lose connectivity to the core, we basically default onto, or the branch office phones would default onto that local survivable proxy. That in turn would have access to those PSTN resources for those emergency calls. And the gateway is actually not just there for voice processing, but it actually maintains the same core configuration that's on the, on the, um, the primary site, meaning that if um, you're basically able to maintain business continuity, things like auto attendance, things like your core feature sets are still enabled and supported on that proxy. Um, next slide here are just the actual IP endpoints. And I know I'm running out of time, so I'm gonna try and go through these a little quickly. Uh, but we basically have phones for whatever type scenario is. Um, our phones are very aggressively priced. They typically range between $100 and $500, depending on the use case. Um, and these really do accommodate all of our end users' needs. The entry-level phone, the 175, is a 10 by 100 switch port. Typically, your common area phone, um, good for um, um, potential users that really aren't on all the phone all that often, uh, or for maybe like a cafeteria, that type of scenario. Uh, the 375 is, is our best-selling phone. It's definitely the one we do the most of. It's a gigabit interface, has the two um, uh, LED displays for extension appearance functionalities. Um, and this unit, MSRP, is at 199 list. The 475 is very similar to the 375 uh, in terms of um, raw spec. Uh, it's definitely a more premium form factor, good for kind of that mid-tier executive. Uh, the 570 is more of our executive unit, so full touch display. Um, and again, that would typically be given to the upper management. Uh, the 675 is more of our UC phone, so that basically allows for full uh, interoperability video uh, calls. Um, again, utilizing our, our video codecs, um, if we did want to do point-to-point um, -point video, that is definitely something that we support, soon to be dramatically expanded as well with multi-point multi, multi -point conferencing. Uh, and if we did want to do something like Teams on that actual phone, it, it's actually a variant of Android, so it gives us the ability to run all sorts of collaboration apps directly on the phone itself. It does support an HDMI port as well if we're going to be doing inter, uh, overhead PAs. The 575 is more of our receptionist phone. So at this instance, we have a uh, fully embedded sidecar. Um, so again, if we have receptionists, we don't necessarily want to use our, our, our virtual tools to manage their call flows and want something that's physical. Definitely a good option. Uh, we have our C71, which is our conference unit. Again, um, excellent for, for conferencing phones or conference rooms. 60-foot radius supports Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. Uh, we have our wireless phone, our DAC solution, the D71. Uh, two components to that, you have the handsets and the base stations. Uh, each base station can support up to 15 handsets, and we do support full uh, meshed roaming functionalities. 
And last off, we have a couple of hotel phones if, if hospitality is something that's important. Um, in terms of our soft client, we do have our, our actual soft client endpoints, um, which is available on Mac, uh, Linux, uh, Windows, Android, and iOS. And this enables full soft client functionalities for mobile use, uh, full visual voicemail functionality, active directory, call history functions. Um, and again, this is a one-time perpetual license. Like I said, works up to about $50 users, a one-time shot. Uh, and it's basically set up in a similar fashion as a physical phone. In terms of the actual system UI, as I've mentioned before, it really is an easy platform to learn. It's not like managing, say, Cisco Call Manager or Avaya Communicator. It's really built on that same operating system that we use on our firewall. It's almost built from an IT perspective. Something we get as a compliment is, you know, people who really don't have any voice background are able to pick this up. I, I would say from a kind of day-to-day -day administrator perspective, it's, it's more similar to managing something like Open Central or an 8x8. Um, Full access to the user portal, as I mentioned before, this gives you access to the fax server, call, rec uh, call recordings, um, any type of voicemail functionality. Um, and again, this is available to every single extension. And this is an HTML5 based um, uh, web app, essentially. Um, and for those receptionists who want to actually have access to our full operator console, this is a fully supported feature as well. Basically gives us access to real time information, active call queues, uh, presence functionality uh, are called parked orbits, as well as uh, integration with the Active Directory. Um, and this can be sent to provision to every single phone if that's a requirement. You can actually make calls from this interface as well. Uh, so again, very flexible uh, solution. And that is pretty much the high level of the Florida voice. Uh, any questions, we're, we're happy to answer. Um, and uh, Brad, maybe I'll just kind of kick it back to you to, to, I guess, wrap it up. All right, thanks, Phil. Um, appreciate the presentation. Um, again, if you have any questions um, right now related to the presentation, uh, please go ahead and uh, chat away in the chat box. We'll try to get those answered for you. Uh, otherwise, uh, we would appreciate if you would take the survey at the end of the presentation. Again, if you do take that survey, we do have a $10 Starbucks gift card coming your way. And uh, I don't see any questions coming in right now, but uh, give it a moment. <clears throat> I just realized too, yeah. that we're, we're actually, we actually look for a little bit more time. So if, if we want, we could have Veronica do a quick overview from a technical perspective of the solution as well. Uh, but, um, we could certainly, um, you know, go through that a little bit. I don't see why not. Um, again, if there's any questions, please submit them. We'll get them answered uh, during the technical overview. And also, uh, if there is anything after the uh, the presentation is over, please please feel free to reach out to uh, and, and we'll get those uh, questions answered for you. Yeah, so no problem. Well, you know, what? I guess we are at time. So maybe we'll do a oh. follow up with the uh, with the um, technical overview a little bit later. All right. Well, uh, if there aren't any questions, uh, that doesn't look like there are. That uh, ends our presentation for today. Um, thank you, everybody, for attending. Again, uh, if, there are pre if there are questions about the presentation afterwards, please feel free to reach out to Integral One, and we'll get them answered for you. Thank you.